Right, this is the fifth lecture on differential equations and it's on solving autonomous differential equations. And if you can't remember, these are the ones that do not include an independent variable, which will be the thing at the end, generally most of the time, not on its own. Right, sorry about that. How to solve these? Now, Usually we're, we're, we've been doing it another way, using the separation of variables. And this way we introduce a new dependent variable which we call u, and u is equal to uh, dy over dx. And similarly we introduce the new independent variable y, which will be the one that's already in the equation. So there's just a little thing we need to know in order to solve them. And that's this. So if we have d2y over dx squared, this is equal to d o, du over dx. As you differentiate this, then it will come to this. Agreed? Now here we can, well, we've got a dy and a dy here, which cancel, which will, which gives us d over dx. So this is also true. And from this, we've got dy over dx, and that equals u. So u du over dy. And we have to remember that. So d d2y of dx squared equals u du over dy. Yep. Now we have an example. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's a very long example, I have to say. Uh, we have 0. See, there's no independent variable. So you recognize them. So 0 equals y double prime plus y. Now to start off with, we're first, well, first we should remember our substitution, well, u equals dy over dx, and um, this can also be set out d2y over dx squared plus y. So, as we said before, this equals u times d u over dy. So we can put that in plus y. And then looking here, we use separation of variables, and we can solve it by integrating both of these parts. So we integrate u and we integrate y. And that will give us this. Now the constant, you have to always remember your constant. I've put the constant in here and it, I've times it by the 2 because it's, there should be halves here. And from this we want to get u on its own because u shouldn't actually be there. We've put it in ourselves. We need it in like x's and y's. So we can rearrange to get u on its own which is pretty simple really if you look at it. And as we can tell, for u on its own, u is actually equal to dy over dx that we set up here. So we can use separation of variables again to put uh, all this part down here because that's the y's and the x up here and the read. And then we can use integration like here. We have to use integration again. So that gives us x and here it's one of these integrations you have to learn where it's actually the inverse of sine. Uh, there is the other ones as well, like today we did, in another lecture, we did a inverse of sec. And there's quite a few you need to learn. It's quite tricky, actually. So if we integrate both parts, we get x equals the inverse of sine y over square root of 2c. Now, usually this is a 1, so you can recognize it a bit more. But because it's a 2c, it's usually over root 1, which is 1, so you don't normally see it. And I've added the constant in there as k. Now, to finish it off, we always have to leave it as y equals some function of x. So what we've done is we've moved the k over. That's a pretty simple move, really. And then we sign it all, and then we move, which will give us, if we sign it all, it gives us sine x minus k equals y over root 2c and then we just move the 2c up so we get y equals root 2c signed x minus k and that's how it's done.